Ay, bago tayo mag-start pala, I forgot. Um, let's talk about your schedule pala. Okay. Kalimutan ko. Isang bagsakan ko na para mamaya tapos agad klase, mga pag-quiz na kayo. No? Okay. So, about your class schedule. So, ito nga. So, Wednesday, this is the deadline of quiz 4 part 1. Wednesday yon. And by Saturday, this is the deadline for quiz 4 part 2. Okay. And then, deadline ng MAC, uh, MAC exams natin, Sunday. So, pwede kayo mag-take or hindi. Okay lang. And then, by Monday, next week, uh, March 15 to 20 until Saturday. This will be your examination week. So, good luck sa inyo. And then, by next next week, this will be a consultation week. So, we will release your grades, no? midterm grades. No? And we will tell you on uh, how to improve yung ano, ibang aspects sa uh, inyong assessments. No? So, ganun na. So, most likely Monday next next week, March 22, ito yung ating consultation. Then, we will do regular class meeting by March 25. Then, Holy Week to, March 28 until the next week. Okay, so Holy Week yan. And then, back to regular schedule na ulit tayo, April 5. Di ba? Ang bilis, no? Tapos, urong mo lang yung April, tapos na yung SEM. Naka isang academic year na kayong online. Di ba? Okay. So, yan. So, yan lang mga important schedule, ha? Again, next week, uh, bago pala yung next week, Wednesday, and yun ng quiz natin, part 1. Saturday, due date yun ng quiz part 2. And then, by Sunday, yun yung due ng examination na MAC. No? So, you may take it or not. Kayo bahala. And then, by next week, starting Monday until Saturday, that will be your midterm exam, which is departmentals. Okay? Uh, one attempt lang siya. So, good luck. And then, next next week, consultation. Okay? So, yan. Para aware kayo sa schedule nyo, ha? So, with that being said, let's now proceed to our main discussion. Um, last time, we were able to cover the following topics. So, we defined an acid and an base based on their characteristics, based on their formulas. And then, we also identified that water uh, self-ionizes so that it has both properties of acids and bases. We also that uh, determine the strength of acid and bases, no? uh, depending on their molecular structure and the type of ionization they exhibit. No, pwede natin malaman yung strength ng acids and bases. Then, since usually for weak acids, uh, naka equilibrium reaction siya, we can write for its equilibrium constant, and then later on. We can solve for their equilibrium amounts no? using the equilibrium constant. And the acids natin, into multiple, multiple forms. Meron siyang monoprotic, diprotic, triprotic, depending on the number of hydrogens it can release. No? And then if you have a mixture of conjugate acid base pair, then you have a buffer solution. And buffer solutions are governed by the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. And sa ngayon, we'll now proceed on the last two, solubility, equilibria, and the common ion effect. Okay. So I believe you have an idea about this already kasi na-discuss na rin to partially in your uh, lecture. Okay. So let's talk about solubility, equilibria. Okay. So let's talk about solubility, equilibria. Given the following equations, what can we observe? Huh? So what can we observe here is that all the reactants are precipitates, no? Silver chloride is a precipitate. Magnesium fluoride, precipitate din yan. Silver carbonate, precipitate din yan. Calcium phosphate, that is also another precipitate, no? So the reaction that describes the ionization of precipitates is called the solubility equilibria. So, yun yung equation na pinapakita ang ionization ng ating precipitates. 
Oh, you may ask, no? Sabi natin last time, even last semester, na kapag precipitate, yun ay solid. Oh, yes naman, solid yan. Pero, remember, the other term for precipitate ay sparingly soluble salt, di ba? Yan yung isa pang term doon. Ibig sabihin nun, it is solid pag titignan mo, pero at some cases, no, it dissociates, no? At, uh, at to, a uh, to a certain extent, nagdi-dissociate siya into ions. Although, since yung dissociation niya into ion ay very minimal, we call it precipitate. No? Ibig sabihin niyan ay solid particles, pero few portions nun ay nagiging ions pa rin. Okay? So that's why we also called our precipitates the sparingly soluble salts. No? So, and they are governed by the equation for the solubility equilibria. Wherein your ions and cations, uh, wherein your cations and your anions of your precipitate dissociates no, accordingly. Okay. And since we have an equilibrium equation, this is governed by uh, equilibrium constants. Now, we can describe this by equilibrium constant. Okay. So, for silver chloride, that is the concentration of silver ions and concentration of chloride ions. So, there's nothing uh, written on the denominator because solid yung reactant natin. Okay? We also call the K for these equations, the KSP, the solubility product equilibrium constant or the, solub uh, the solubility product constant. Okay? So, yun yung tawag sa K this time. So, ang dami na natin K, no? We have Ka, we have Kb, we have Kw, we have Kp, we have Kc, and then we have Ksp. Okay. So Ksp is the equilibrium constant for the solubility equations no? or the solubility equilibrium. Okay. So alam nyo na naman kung paano magsulat ng K. No? So hindi na tayo mag-focus dyan. And... Depending on your compound, it has different KSP, no? similar with acids and bases. No? So here are some of the KSP values for compounds that are common, commonly used in chemistry. So yan, wag nyo kakabisaduhin yan. Pakisave na lang sa cellphone yung picture. Okay, so we will need this table if we are going to uh, solve for the equilibrium concentration of our chemical species. No? Okay. And remember, ang ating precipitates, they dissociate into ions, but to a very small extent. That means they are slightly soluble. Okay. We can describe the extent of its solubility in terms of molar solubility or just the solubility. So, ano yung dalawang to? When you say molar solubility, this is uh, the extent that tells us the number of moles of your salt that dissolved in water. No? Okay. So, sinasabi niya sa atin kung ilang moles ng ions yung produce when it is dissolved in water. Up to that extent lang yung kaya matunaw sa water. Okay. So, that is different with solubility lang kasi kapag sinabi molar, naka-moles. Kapag solubility, naka-grams. No? The two are related, no? Bakit? Kasi we can convert moles to grams by multiplying it by the molar mass, okay? So, kunwari, nakuha mo molar solubility. Uh, if you want to convert that into solubility, you just multiply this by the molar mass, okay? Well, for example, you are given the solubility. You want to convert it to molar solubility. You have to divide this by the molar mass, okay? So, again, ano yung kwento nitong dalawan to? This tells us the extent of dissociation of our ions no, at equilibrium. So, sinasabi niya by how much magdi-dissociate yung ating ions at equilibrium. Okay. So, yan. so this is the general flow of the, equi uh, of the calculation. Suppose you're given the solubility, hinahanap yung Ksp. So you convert solubility to mole solubility. And then from the molar solubility... You plug it in the ice table. Okay? Lalagay mo siya sa ice table. Then kung ano yung mga concentrations at the ice table, yun yung ipa-plug in mo sa K to get the KSP. Okay? At ito yung gagawin natin ngayon. Okay? 
So for our discussion today, we will start with the given KSP and then we will get the equilibrium concentrations. No? So from KSP, kukunin natin equilibrium concentrations. So we will get the molar solubility and later on the gram solubility or just the solubility. Okay. So basically, ano lang to? Parang ice table pa rin naman. Okay. Nadagdagan lang tayo ng terms such as molar solubility and the solubility itself. Okay. So ganun lang. Ice table pa rin to. So let's, uh, let's try this one. What is the solubility of silver chloride in grams per liter? Okay. So, before you start, no, you should know first the, the manner of dissociation of silver chloride into ions. Kailangan pakita natin yung equation that shows the dissociation of silver chloride into its ions. Okay. So, first thing is, kailangan alam yung formula. So, silver chloride is AgCl. And that's a precipitate, so we indicate it as solid. Since ang sabi natin, it will dissociate into ions, gagawin natin siyang cation aqueous and the anion aqueous. If they have subscripts, then magiging coefficients yun. So kunwari Ag2, so that means 2 Ag plus mabubuo mo. Kunwari you have Cl3. No? So that means three chloride ions ma form. No? Okay. So we show the ions that we can form from this and we follow the uh, balancing no? the balancing rules data. Okay. And this equation has a KSP value. No? So what is KSP? Na to? So let's look at the table data. So for silver chloride, uh, ito. Okay, so for silver chloride, the KSP is 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 10. Okay, so KSP is 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 10. Now. Since ang ating KSP ay raised to negative 10, that means it is most likely puro reactants lang. Now. Puro solids lang tayo, kaya precipitate siya. Masyadong mababa na yung KSP eh. Okay, kaya this uh, disappears na solid siya. Although to some extent may ions tayong na form then. Okay. So yan na, we have the KSP, we have the equation, let's plug it into our ice table. Okay. So yung AgCl lagay natin. Ag plus and then Cl minus. Remember, sabi ko last time, di ba? Kapag solid or liquid, wag isusulat, no? So, nilagay ko lang to para i-blank yun. Okay. So, since solid to, that means this column is left blank. Okay. So, wala kang ilalagay dyan because it will not affect the equilibrium. No. So, it will not affect the equilibrium system. Ang mag magkakaroon ng effect ay itong ions natin. So, do we have any initial amounts for silver or chloride? Wala naman sinabi. So, that's zero. So since we have zero products, the direction of the reaction is going to the right. No? So going to the right yung ating reaction. That means the change for reactants will be, uh, for the products will be positive. Okay. And then at equilibrium, zero plus x is just x. We plug it sa KSP. That's the concentration of Ag plus and Cl minus. KSP is equals to x times dx. So that's x squared equals KSP. Or to solve for x, that's the square root of KSP. Ngayon, ano yung x? No? Yung value ng x na nasusolve natin, this is called the molar solubility. Molar solubility. Okay? So again, yung value ng x, yun ay molar solubility. Molar Solubility. Okay. So, yan. So, yan. Yan ay molar solubility. So, let's solve for that. Square root lang yan ng KSP. Pindutin na lang sa calcium. Times 10. This to negative 10. So, the molar solubility of silver chloride is 1.26 times 10 raised to negative 5 
molar. So that is the molar solubility na. Diba? Direct lang. Yun na yun. Okay. Then, ano yung hinahanap? Solubility in grams per ml. Masabi ko sa inyo, yung molar solubility, okay, pwede mo yung gawing gram solubility or just solubility. Solubility by multiplying it by its molar mass. Okay? So you just multiply the molar solubility by the molar mass. Okay? So we have 1.26 times 10 is to negative 5 mole per liter times molar mass ng ano? E di molar mass ng precipitate nyo, no? So Google ko na lang ano kaya molar mass nito. According to Google, that's 143.32 grams per mole. So, as we multiply the molar solubility and the molar mass, the moles will cancel, giving us the units gram per liter. So, the, the solubility of silver chloride in grams per liter is 1.8 times 10 raised to negative 4 grams per liter. Okay. So, I want to express this in decimal now, just to show na super onti lang ng ating salt ang madidissociate na. So, if I express this in decimal, that will be 1, 2. So, ganyan lang. Only um, 0 0.00018 grams ng ating precipitate yung magdidissociate into ions na. Still, magdi-dissociate siya, yes, but yung ganyang mass, that's too negligible. Kaya sabi natin ay solid yan or precipitate yan or sparingly soluble salt. Okay? So that is the solubility of silver chloride in our solution. Hanggang dyan lang yung limit. Okay? Kahit dagdagan mo yan neto, kahit dagdagan mo neto, wala. Hanggang dyan lang talaga yung limit. Kasi baka isipin nyo, the Lechate principle may apply here, no? Kasi I added reactant. So, dagdagan ko ng silver chloride. Pero, the reaction will not be shifted to the product. Bakit? AgCl solid doesn't affect the equilibrium expression. Blank siya, eh. So, that means wala siyang effect dito sa ating equilibrium. So, that means ganoon man karami ilagay mong AgCl, hanggang dyan lang talaga yung kaya madissolve. Okay. So, yan. So, again, takeaways natin. The value of X corresponds to the molar solubility. And when you multiply it by the molar mass, you get the gram solubility or just the solubility. Okay. So, ganun lang. Mas madali na yung calculations ngayon. No? So, may shortcut dito, no? Kasi madali lang masyado itong ano, madali lang masyado yung calculations dito. No? So, there are shortcuts no? para hindi ka na gumamit ng ice table. Okay. Although ako, I prefer ice table para na. So, the following are the shortcut that we can use no? para mapabilis yung ating calculation. Uh, in this table, we see here the corresponding ratio of the cations and the anions. No? So, suppose you have one-to-one -one ratio of cation and an ion. So, ito yung mga examples natin. One-to-one -one ratio nila. Isang silver, isang chloride, isang barium, isang sulfate. No? So, if the ratio of your, ano, of your cation and your anion is one-to-one, -one, that means to solve for the molar solubility, that is just the square root of the KSP. Okay? Again, kapag one-to-one -one yung ratio ng cation pati an ion, molar solubility is just the square root of the KSP. Okay. So, yan. Di ba, ito yung nakuha natin. This time, S squared nilagay nila, pero yung ginamit ko kanina ay X. No? Same lang yan. So, di ba, KSP is equals to X squared or S squared. To get the S or the X, that's just the square root of KSP. That is true if your ion, if your ionic compound has one-to-one -one ratio for your cation and your anion. Okay? So, ganun lang.
Paano naman kapag 1 to 2 yung ratio nila? 1 to 2. No? For example, itong dalawa. We have silver carbonate and then lead fluoride. No? For silver carbonate, dalawang cation katumbas ay isang anion because you will produce two silver ions and one carbonate ion. For lead fluoride naman, you will produce one cation and two anions. No? We sabihin for these two examples, the ratio of the ions ay 1 to 2. No? So to get the molar solubility for this case, no, that is ano, the cube root of Ksp over 4. Paano nangyari yun? Paano natin nakuha tong cube root ng Ksp over 4? That's the molar solubility. So let me show the derivation. Okay. So, kunin kong example itong lead fluoride, lead 2 fluoride. So, lead 2 fluoride will dissociate into lead 2 plus and 2F minus. If you write the ice table at equilibrium, lead will be just X, then fluoride will be 2X. If you write that in KSP, that will be X times 2X and then naka square pa yun. Remember, your coefficients are turned into subscripts, di ba, kapag nilagay sa KSP. Bukod pa yun sa 2x na nasa equilibrium. Okay. So, what is 2 raised to 2? That's 4. x raised to 2 is x squared times another x, so you have x cubed. So, to solve for x, that's just the cube root of KSP divided by 4. Yun yung reason paano nila nakuha yun. So as long as you know kung ano yung format ng iyong ions, pwede ka bisaduhin mo na lang ito. So pwede ka bisaduhin mo na lang yan. Kapag 1 to 1, molar solubility is the square root of KSP. Kapag 1 to 2, molar solubility is the cube root of KSP over 4. Okay. Paano naman kapag 1 to 3 yung ratio nila? 1 to 3. Okay. For example, aluminum hydroxide. If the ratio is 1 to 3, then the molar solubility can be calculated as the fourth root of KSP divided by 27. Paano nangyari yun? Na? Paano nangyari yun? That is also derived from the ice table. Okay. So aluminum hydroxide, ito yung isa sa component ng Kremil S. Okay, last ang bakal yun. We have Al3 plus 3OH minus. At equilibrium, using the ice table, Al3 plus will be X. OH will be 3X, no? And kapag yan, ilagay mo sa K expression mo, that will be X times 3X, then naka-cube pa yun. Okay. So for OH concentration, that is 3X. And it is also raised to 3 because of the coefficient then, no? So, what's 3 cube? So, 3 times 3, 9 times 3, 9, 18, 27. Then you have x cube times x. You will have x raised to 4. Okay, and nakuha nila that x is equals to the fourth root of KSP over 27. Okay, so yan. Ganun lang. Okay. So, that is true for the ratio of your cation and anion being 1 to 3. No? So regardless, kung sino yung 1, sino yung 3, as long as yun yung ratio nila, the molar solubility is just the fourth root of KSP divided by 27. And paano naman kapag ang ratio nila ay 2 to 3, regardless kung sino yung sa cation, sino sa anion yung 2 at 3. No? So if the ratio is 2 to 3, then the molar solubility can be calculated as the fifth root of KSP divided by 108. Ito yan. Paano nakuha yun, yung fifth root of KSP divided by 108? O, nakuha din yan sa ice table. Okay? So, kunin ko tong example natin. We have calcium phosphate. Don't worry, hanggang dito lang yun. Hanggang fifth root lang. So, we will produce calcium Ay, teka lang. Mali yung equation. 
So you will produce calcium 2 plus, that long calcium, and then dalawang phosphate ion. At equilibrium, pag ginawa nyo yung ice table, this will be 3x, this will be 2x. If you plug it into KSP, yung 3x, naka-cube pa yan for calcium kasi may uh, coefficient na 3, kaya naka-cube yan. Then for phosphate, ganun din, 2x raised to 2. So what is 3 cube? 3 cube is 27 times what is 2 square? Eighty four times we have x cube and then x square. Pag samahin mo sila, you will get x raised to 5. Okay. 27.4, ah, I mean 27 times 4 pala, times pala yan. <laughs> so when you multiply 27 and 4, that is equal to 108, no, x 5 x raised to 5 now. So to solve for the value x, that is just the fifth root of KSP divided by 108. So basically, ito yung reason bakit yun yung nakasulat doon. That the molar solubility is the fifth root of KSP divided by 108. So saan nangyari? Saan to galing lahat? Ito lahat ay galing sa ice table. Okay? So yan, um, maganda kasi may ma-recognize kang patterns dito. Okay. So it is better if you recognize patterns so that kahit hindi ka na mag-ice table, you can answer the problem. Again, if the ratio of your cation and your anion is 1 to 1, molar solubility is the square root of KSP. If the ratio is 1 to 2, molar solubility is the cube root of KSP divided by 4. If the ratio is 1 to 3, molar solubility is the fourth root of KSP divided by 27. And lastly, if the ratio is 2 to 3, molar solubility is the fifth root of KSP divided by 108. No. So, yun. so, ano yung ratio? Tignan mo lang kung ano yung ilang cations, ilang anions mabubuo mo. Okay? At huwag ka na mag-ice table, okay lang. Okay, so yun lang. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the process of forming ano, precipitates. Pag pinaghalo ko ba yung dalawang substance, may precipitate agad na mabubuo. No? So, ang pumapasok sa isip natin ay yes. No? Pag pinaghalo mo yan, mabubuo agad yung precipitate. No? But in reality, the formation of precipitate is a stepwise process. No? Hindi agad-agad yun mafoform. Okay. So it has to reach a certain threshold so that a precipitate will be formed. No? Okay. So remember yung discussion natin about the... Sa atin ba yun or sa lecture? Yung discussion about the saturation no? and then yung sa formation ng crystals. Ganun din dito. Okay. So yung precipitate natin, hindi agad-agad yan mabubuo. No? It has to reach a certain threshold for it to form. No. Parang ano lang yan. Uh, if you want to make candies, ang candy kasi, that is just sugar dissolved in water but to a very high amounts, no? very high concentration. Pag naglagay ka ng, tu, ano, ng asukal sa tubig, hindi naman instantly magiging candy yan. No? Okay. You have to add more, ng, more sugar sa water until it becomes saturated and then super saturated. Once na yan ay maging super saturated, it automatically turns into solids. No? You form the crystals. So, ganun din dito sa ating precipitates. No? When you add uh, just small amounts of your ions, hindi agad ma-form yan. It has to reach a threshold para ma-form yung precipitate. No? So, kailan natin malalaman if the threshold was achieved? No? So you had just you just have to compare the reaction quotient with the KSP, okay? So the reaction quotient is the amounts of your ions initially and then compare it to the KSP natin, okay? So if your Q is less than the KSP, that means you have not reached the saturation point. It means being unsaturated ka and no precipitate will form. If Q is equal to KSP, you are on the saturated uh, solution part. However, wala pang precipitate na mabubuo. They are just in equilibrium pa. 
Pero kapag dinagdagan mo pa yung iyong ions, no, that means yung Q mo, it becomes greater than Ksp. Then doon na mamumuo yung ating precipitate. Okay? So again, the precipitate will only form when the threshold was achieved, no? When your um, when your ions amount is greater than the Ksp, when Q is greater than Ksp. Pero if you yun ay equal lang or less than, hindi pa mabubuo yung ions natin. Okay? So that means hindi agad-agad nabubuo yung ions. Na? So, kailangan may limit siyang ma-reach until mag-start siya, mag-form ng precipitate. Okay? So, let's try this problem. If 2 ml of 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide are added to 1 liter of 0.1 molar calcium chloride, will a precipitate form? Okay? Ang tanongin natin muna, sarili natin, may mabubuo nga ba dyan precipitate? No? So, for us to know if may precipitate tayo mabubuo, we should remember the solubility rules. No? Ano mangyayari dito? Yung sodium hydroxide magiging Na+, plus, OH-, minus. calcium chloride will become calcium 2+, plus, and then calcium chloride ions. And then magsasama sila, di ba? From our existing ions, can we form precipitates out of this? May precipitate na mabubuo dyan. Okay? Dito sa ions natin, anong precipitate yun? The precipitate that we can form out of this is calcium hydroxide. No? Remember, sa solubility rules, sabi doon that hydroxides are soluble for group 1 and barium metal only. So, yun lang yung limit niya. Group 1 and barium metal. However, for any other metals, hindi na siya soluble. Okay? So that means for calcium na bonded with hydroxide, precipitate yun dapat. Okay. So these two may form precipitates. Calcium and hydroxide. Again, paano ko nalaman na silang dalawa ay mag-form ng precipitate? Just uh, remember your solubility rules. So I will write here the equation for the dissociation of my calcium hydroxide precipitate. So I will form calcium 2 plus and then 2 OH minus. So ganun. So ano yung first step nyo dito? You must identify first kung ano yung precipitate na mabubuo ninyo. Then once identified nyo na yung precipitate na mabubuo nyo, in our case, that's calcium hydroxide, you write the uh, solubility equilibria for calcium hydroxide. Then you need to use the ice table. Okay. Okay, so yan. So initially, what is the concentration of calcium and hydroxide in our solution? So, sa ating solution, may 2 ml of, uh, uh, may 2 ml of 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide tayo and 1 liter of 0.1 molar calcium chloride. Di ba sabi natin, when we mix two solutions, nagkakaroon ng dilution, di ba? So, by, by using dilution formula, we can actually get the molarity of calcium and dehydroxide ions initially present in our solution. Pwede tayo gumamit ng dilution formula, no? Okay, so, ano ba yung total volume ng solution natin? That will be 1,002 ml, di ba? Pag pinag-add mo itong dalawa. However, pwede tayo mag-approximate na lang. Bakit? Kasi, compare your 2 ml with 1,000 ml. No? 2 ml is very negligible, no? Okay, so that means it will not change the molarity of the solution by that much. Okay? So that means yung molarity ng calcium unchanged yan. Hindi yan magbabago. Kasi 1 liter pa rin yung final volume. No? Assuming that 2 ml is very small. No? Which is totoo naman. Very small lang yung 2 ml compared to 1 liter. So that the molarity of calcium will be the same. 0.1 pa rin yan. 
But for sodium and hydroxide ions, their molarity will be very different. No? Magiging very different yung uh, molarity ng sodium and hydroxide ions when we dissolve it in our solution. Bakit? Kasi we started with 2 ml. And then yung final volume natin naging 1 liter na. Okay. So that means masyadong bababa yung ating concentration for these ions. So alamin natin kung ano yung magiging resulting concentration ng OH when we add it in our solution. Okay. So we can use the dilution formula M1V1 equals M2V2. We are solving for the final concentration. So that will be M1V1 over V2. And don't forget this equation. Gamit na gamit yan. Even sa buffer. Okay. So the initial concentration is 0 0.2 molar times the initial volume, 2 ml. And the final volume, that is 1,000, 2 ml na. 1,000 plus yung 2 ml. Pero sabi ko nga sa inyo, yung 2 ml dun na dinagdag mo, assume that it is negligible. No? Masyado siyang maliit eh. Kaya kahit 1,000 na lang ilagay mo dyan. Okay. Okay. So again, kapag mga ano lang, 2 ml, 1 ml, pwede mo burahin mo na yan dun. Kapag 1 liter naman yung solution mo. So it is negligible eh. So, what will be the final molarity of sodium hydroxide? Pindutin sa calcul lang yan. Okay. So, that will be 4 times 10 raised to negative 4. Okay. So, ano yung ginawa uli natin? Ang ginawa natin is that, sabi natin, when we add the two solutions, their ions must be diluted. So, that's, that's why we have to use the dilution formula. However, in our case, no, yung ating original solution ay 1 liter. Ang dinagdag natin ay 2 ml. Yung 2 ml compared to 1 liter, that's very negligible. So, that means, whatever the concentration of calcium is initially, yun na yun. Kahit di ka na mag-dilution formula. Sobrang liit lang ng 2 ml. Eh. Okay. However, for sodium hydroxide, ito yung kailangan natin gamitan ng dilution formula. Bakit? Yun nga, yung 2, lit 2 ml kasi magiging 1 liter siya. No? So it will change by a lot. No? 500 times yung ililiit niya lalo. Okay. So that's why we use the dilution formula here para malaman natin what is the final concentration of OH in our solution. So, using this equation, we get 4 times 10 raised to negative 4 molar. That's the concentration of OH in our solution. Then, to answer the question, will the precipitate form, you have to compare Q and the K. The K is already given. Nasa table yun. Hanapin natin yung K for calcium hydroxide. Okay, so for calcium hydroxide, ito. K is 8 times 10 raised to negative 6. Okay, so we have to uh, we have to uh, we have to compare the reaction quotient with the K, no? Para ma-check natin kung may precipitate the ba na mabubuo or wala pa. Okay? So, yan na yung K natin. Paano natin kukunin yung Q? Again, Q is just the reaction quotient. That is the initial amounts of your ions, no? So, saan mo makukuha yung info na yan? Dito sa ice table natin. Okay, so Q, we have 0.1 for calcium. Then for hydroxide, initial amount is 4 times 10 raised to negative 4. Square mo yan. So solving for the reaction quotient, that is... one point six times ten raised to negative eight. No. Okay. So our Q is one point six times ten raised to negative eight. 
KSP, where the K is 8 times 10 raised to negative 6. So from these values, we can say that Q is less than K. So will they precipitate form? Wala pa. No precipitate will form. Okay, so again, wala pa tayong mabubuong precipitate. Kasi sabi natin, Q is less than the K. And sabi dito, if your Q is less than the K, no precipitate will form. Only a precipitate will form pag Q is greater than K na. Okay, so dun lang siya mag-start mamuo. So yun lang. Ayan. Uh, for the next problem, ganito naman ang ganap, no? May nilagay akong isang ganito sa quiz, no? Isa lang. Okay. Wala lang, para matry lang natin. Okay. So, ano yung ganap dito sa quiz na to? Masahin natin. Ay, sa question na to. Sabi dyan, what concentration of silver is required to precipitate only silver bromide in a solution that contains both bromide and chloride? at a concentration of 0.2 molar. No. So, ang sabi dyan, we have a solution containing bromide ion and then chloride ions. So, yung solution natin may bromide and chloride na ions na yan. Pag nilagdagan natin yan ng silver, what will happen? Pwede tayo makabuo ng AGBR. And also, pwede rin tayo makabuo ng AGCl. Okay? So, when we, inad, uh, when we add enough silver, uh, when we add enough silver to our solution, two precipitates may occur. Uh, may, uh, no, may exist, no? So, pwede meron tayong silver bromide, meron tayong silver chloride. Ang gusto ng problem natin ay silver bromide lang yung mabubuo. So, we want this to form, not this. Is that possible? Yes, no? That is possible. Bakit? Sabi natin, di ba? Basta alam natin that we did not reach the threshold, wala tayong precipitate na mabubuo, no? So, ang technique natin for this problem is to try to check ano yung lower limit para mabuo yung silver bromide and ano yung upper limit para hindi mabuo ang silver chloride na. Kailan mag-start mabuo itong silver bromide? At kailan dapat ako huminto sa pag-add ng silver ions para hindi mabuo ito? Okay? So basically, I'm going to solve for the concentrations of silver needed to precipitate the two ions. So ito, pag nalaman ko yung concentration ng silver, Ibig sabihin, kailangan ko magdagdag ng ganung amount ng silver ions pataas so that the Q will be greater than the K for this salt no? para ma-form ma siya as solid precipitate para maging ganito yung itsura niya. Okay? However, kailangan hindi naman sobra-sobra yung silver na ilalagay ko kasi kapag sobra-sobra, AGCL may also form. No? So, that means alamin ko hanggang saan yung lower limit para mabuo to at, ano, ang, at hanggang kailan ako mag a no para hindi mabuo tong AGCL. So, uh, to answer this problem, ganito lang ang gagawin natin. Okay? So, for this reaction, AGBR, magiging AG plus and CL, uh, BR minus yan. So, kunin natin yung KSP. KSV for AGBR is 7.7 .7 times 10 raised to negative 3. And then for AGCL, ah, CL pala. So let me... Teka lang. Negative 3 ba yan? AGBR. Ah, negative 13 for AGBR. For AGCL, 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 10. Okay. So, yan. So, ano gagawin natin? No? 
So, alamin natin, kailan mag-start ma-form ang AGBR precipitate. At alamin din natin kung kailan mag-start ma-form yung AGCL. Okay. So, how? Uh, you write your K expressions. Sulat mo K equals AG plus and BR minus. Okay. So, alam na ba natin yung BR minus? Sabi sa problem, it... Uh, yung BR and CL concentration ay 0 0.02 na. So that means we can solve for the AG ion na required para mag-start ito ma-form. No? So that is just KSP divided by BR minus. So that will be 7.7 .7 times 10 is a negative 13 divided by BR 0 0.02. Sabi sa problem. So, the minimum amount no, to start the production of AGBR is three point eighty five times ten raised to negative eleven. So, dito lang siya mag start maging ions. No? And so, dyan lang siya mag start maging ions. Pag uh, ito yung concentration pataas. So, how about for AGCL? Kailan siya mag-start maging ano? Kailan siya mag-start maging precipitate? No? So, we do the same calculation. AG and CL minus. So, for AG, it's KSP divided by CL. So, that will be 1.6 and 10 is a negative 10. 0 0.02. Point, uh, 8 times 10 raised to negative 9. So, the concentration of AG plus na mag-start mag-form ng precipitate with bromide is this and above. No? Mula dito pataas. Doon siya mag-form ng AGBR precipitate. However, we should take note that hindi dapat tayo lumagpas dito sa 8 times 10 raised to negative 9. Because we, if we exceed this concentration for silver, chlorides will also start precipitating. No? So, kailangan yung amount ng silver na needed to precipitate only the A, uh, only the BR is, ito lang dapat yung range niya. So, ito lang dapat yung range ng silver ions needed to precipitate only the BR. So, it should be greater than 3.85 times 10 raised to negative 11 para mabuo na tong AGBR. But it must be less than this, no? 8 times 10 raised to negative 9 molar. Bakit? If we reach this 8 times 10 raised to negative 9 molar, AGCL will start forming. Okay. So, kung gusto mo ito lang mabuo, it should be less than this but greater than this. Okay. Greater than this, so that Q will be greater than K. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, magiging precipitate na yung AGBR. But, less than this concentration. Kasi, if we reach this, ito yung threshold for AGCL. Pag naabot natin to, or lumagpas tayo dito, parehas silang mamumuo. No? So, hindi mo na sila madidistinguish sino sa kanila yung kailangan kong, ano, uh, sino dito yung ano, AGBR, sino yung AGCL? Kasi para sila ng color. Okay. So, hindi mo na sila madidistinguish from one another. Okay. This process is called fractional precipitation. And we use it uh, to actually remove ions from our solution. So, ito yung ginagamit naming mga chemist kapag kunwari, we want to determine the calcium and the magnesium content of water. No? So, ganun ginagawa namin. We use the idea of solubility equilibria. Yung aming water, dinadagdagan namin ng base para mag-form ng precipitate yung calcium and yung magnesium. Okay. So, kunwari, gusto lang namin yung magnesium lang mabuo. Hindi magkocompute kami. Anong limit lang yung kailangan namin para yung calcium lang mabuo. No? And ano yung limit para yung ano, magnesium mabuo. So, ganun ginagawa namin. Uh, 
Yeah, share ko lang. So this is used when you want to precipitate only one of the ions from your solution. So ito yung way then to separate mixtures, di ba? Pag ions, di ba parang mahirap i-separate yung ions? Actually, kaya siya by fractional precipitation. You precipitate one ion first para makuha mo yung Cl. Okay. Hanari, so, yung AGBR, yung CL, gusto mo kunin from the solution, na di precipitate mo muna yung BR para wala na siya. Yung CL na lang matitira. Okay. So, again, fractional precipitation, ano lang yung pinaka-general idea dyan? If you want to precipitate one of the ions, you should not reach the threshold for the other ion. No? Kailangan hindi mo ma-reach yung limit, no? para mabuo yung ibang precipitates. No? So, and that can be done using the KSP calculations. No? Given naman usually yung ano, concentration ng ibang ions in your solution. Okay. So, yan. Marami pa tong complex calculation, pero hindi na natin gagawin yan. Okay. And for the last part of our discussion today, let's talk about the common ion effect and solubility. No? So, na-discuss na to slightly sa lecture. No? So, sabi doon, common ion effect is one of the application of the Chate principle. No? So, it states that uh, if you have common ions in your equilibrium expression, then the reaction will be shifted to the left no? in case for um, precipitates. No? So, that means, kunwari, may common ion ka na nilagay with your precipitate then ang result ay magiging less soluble siya. Yeah. Okay? And the otherwise was also discussed in your lecture, yung electrolyte effect, that states that when you add diverse ions in your solution, your precipitate will be more soluble because of the effect of ionic strength. No. Okay. So hopefully natapos nyo na yun. Okay. So dito lang tayo muna sa common ion effect. No? So ano uli sabi sa common ion effect? Ang um, principle lang dyan is that because of the presence of common ions, the solubility of your precipitate will further decrease. No. Bakit? Kasi the presence of common ions will affect the equilibrium calculation. Babaguhin niya yung ice table natin eh. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, affected din yung value for X, the molar solubility. Okay. So, to show this uh, phenomena, let's answer this problem. What is the molar solubility of AGBR in water and in 0 0.001 molar NABR? Okay. So, in water, ibig sabihin wala tayong ibang ions. So, that means we are not concerned with the common ion effect nor the diverse ion effect or the electrolyte effect. So, as is lang tong calculation natin data. So let's show the dissociation of ABR, AGBR into ions. So AGBR, AG plus, BR minus. So wala tayong lalagay for AG kasi solid yan. For silver, since nasa pure water lang tayo, zero yung ions natin for both of them. And then magiging positive X yan. Then at equilibrium, X yan. So, to solve for the molar solubility of AGBR, that is the square root of KSP na lang. No? Pwede mo kunin yun sa ice table. Square root of KSP na lang siya. And that's equal to? Ano nga pala yung KSP na ito? Kunin ka dito. 7.7. Okay. So, kunin natin yung molar solubility ng AGBR in pure water alone. So, the molar solubility is 8.77 times 10 raised to negative 7 molar. So, yan yung kanyang molar solubility in just water. No? And sa water lang siya nakahalo. However, tignan natin kapag siya ay nilagay sa sodium bromide. Pag yan nilagay sa sodium bromide, what will happen? Do we have common ions here? Meron tayong common ion dyan. Ano dun? 
Ano yung common? Diba? This will dissociate into Na plus and then Br minus. The common ion is the Br minus. So, ibig sabihin, yung initial amount ng Br natin, mababago na siya. So, from zero, it is now 0, 0.001. Okay? Paano naging ganun? Stoic lang. Diba sabi natin, yan, magiging ions yan, di ba? So, if this is 0 0.001 molar, that means the concentration of other ions is also the same, provided that they have the same coefficients. No? So, that means yung bromide natin, that is 0 0.001 molar initially. Will that affect the equilibrium? Obviously, because nagbago yung ice table natin. So, the addition of NABR will affect the equilibrium directly. That's why mayroon tayong common ion effect. No? So, at equilibrium, bromide will now be 0 .00, uh, 0 0.001 plus X. No? Yan na yung kanyang expression at equilibrium. However, yung AG, ganun pa rin. Wala namang kasi tayong existing AG. No? Okay. So, ayan. Ngayon, what will be the molar solubility? What will be the value of X? Oh, dito, hindi na natin ito pwede gamitan ng shortcut. No? Kasi, hindi na to X eh. May number na eh. May 0 point something na eh. So, we have to write the K expression. That's AG plus BR minus. So, KSP is equal to X times 0 0.001 plus X. Okay. So, hindi tayo pwede gumamit dito ng square root of chaka kasi ang requirement natin doon ay initial ng re reactant. Eh, wala tayo for reactant. Solid yan eh. So, no choice. No quadratic equation tayo. Okay. So, we have to distribute this term plus X square. We rewrite this into proper format for polynomials. Then we solve for the value of x using calculator. Okay? Magamit na kayo ng calc. So that is 1.001 and negative 7.7 .7 times 10 raised to negative 13. So the value of x will be 7.7 0.7 times 10 raised to negative 10. The other value is negative 1 negative, raised to negative 3. So, syempre yung positive value yung gagamitin nyo to. Okay. What happened to the molar solubility uh, when we have common ion effect? So, what happened is that the molar solubility decreased by 1,000. No? Ganun katindi yung binaba ng kanyang uh, solubility in the presence of common ions. Okay. And that's the Lechate principle in calculation. So it states as that when we add the concentration of the product, it will shift the equilibrium to the reactant. No? Sa point of view ni precipitate, it will be less soluble. Kasi the equilibrium will be pushed to the left mas maraming solids ang mafoform kaysa sa ions. Okay, so that's why in the presence of the uh, common ions, the solubility of salts decreases. And of course, counterpart yung nangyayari when you add diverse ions. No? Uh, yun yung ano, yun yung buong concept ng chapter 4 sa lecture. So when you add diverse ions, what happens is that they prevent the ions from coming back together. And as a result, the equilibrium is shifted to the right. No? So ang effect ng diverse ion, pinipigilan nila magdikit tong dalawa para maging precipitate. So since hindered sila to go back to the left side, the equilibrium will be shifted to the right. Okay. And that's usually described by activities, no? ionic activities, activity coefficients. No? So yan, hopefully... Nasusundan nyo na yun kasi nasa lecture yan. Okay? 
So, yun lang. Again, common ion effect that decreases the solubility of the salt. Diverse ion effect or electro, uh, electrolyte ion effect. No? Uh, that increases the solubility of the salt naman. Okay. So, yun. Okay. So, other factors that can affect the solubility is the pH. No? Other than the common ion. So, yung pH, uh, if you have insoluble bases, they will be more soluble in acidic solutions rather than basic. And if you have insoluble acids, they will be more soluble in acidic solutions rather than in acidic media. The concept is, ano pa rin, the Chate principle. Okay? Common ion effect pa rin yan. Okay, so let's have this example. Consider magnesium hydroxide in acidic and basic solutions. Alamin natin, saan siya mas soluble? Since we know, magnesium hydroxide is, ano, since magnesium hydroxide is basic, kasi may OH yan, so it will be more soluble in acidic solution. Okay? It will be more soluble in acidic solution. Bakit? Kasi... What happens in acidic solution is that yung ating OH na napoproduce from our salt, nababawasan yan. Nababawasan yan. Bumababa yan. Ah. Pagpataas, Elsa. Pagpababa, bumababa concentration. Okay. So, bumababa kasi yung concentration ng OH natin in acidic solution. Why? Because OH reacts with H plus to produce water. Water kasi na produce So, bumababa to. So, that means the equilibrium will be shifted more to the right. Again, so ito yung reason kung bakit ang ating insoluble bases, they are more soluble in acidic media. Because in acidic media, the OH concentration becomes lower. Bumababa yan lalo as it reacts with H plus to produce water. So, the equilibrium will be shifted to the right now. However, in the presence of base, kunwari may sodium hydroxide ka, this is common ion effect. So, kapag sa basic solution yan, nilagay mo yung magnesium hydroxide, magiging less soluble to because of the common ion effect. Eh. Okay, tumataas yung OH mo. Uh, tumataas yan, so that means the equilibrium will be shifted to the left. So, this will be less soluble in basic solutions. Okay? So, ang tanong dyan, alamin natin at what pH siya uh, soluble. Ano yung threshold? No? Ano yung limit para masabi natin na soluble siya doon at saan siya hindi soluble? Alamin natin kung ano yung pH ng solution na mas soluble siya or less soluble. Paano? O, you have your equation, you write your ice table. Okay. So initially, wala tayong sinabi about dito. So this will be positive 2x. This will be x. So this will be x. This will be 2x. So since ang ratio ng ating cation and ion ay 2 to 1, we know that for 2 to 1, Ksp is equal to, I mean the solubility is Ksp divided by 4. Cube root of Ksp divided by 4. Saan ang galing yan, sir? Uh, dito yung sa first table na sinabi ko. If ang ratio ng ions mo ay 2 to 1, then the molar solubility is this. Ito na yan. Okay, yan ay molar solubility. That's the cube root of Ksp divided by 4. So, let's solve for the value of x. Uh, dito na lang para may space pa ako. So, that's 1.2 times 10 raised to negative 11 divided by 4. X is. So, X is 1.4 times 10 raised to negative 4 molar. Okay. So, para malaman natin kung anong pH yan mas magiging soluble. Or kailan at nung pH siya mas magiging less soluble, alamin muna natin kung ano ba yung pH pag hinalo natin to sa tubig. Okay. 
So, paano natin malalaman yung pH pag hinalo to sa tubig? Okay. So, you know your X already. To calculate for the concentration of OH, just multiply it by 2. Okay. So, 2X yun according to ice table. So, that will be 2.88 times 10 raised to negative 4 molar. Solve for the POH, that's negative log of H. Uh, OH. Papansin nyo, medyo mabilis na tayo kasi alam nyo na kung paano yung calculations dito. Ulit-ulit lang siya. And the pH of the solution is 10.46. This is the pH of magnesium hydroxide when dissolved in water. Ang tanong, anong pH siya mas magiging soluble? Anong pH siya mas magiging less soluble? Okay. So sabi natin, since this is basic salt, no, it will be more soluble in pH that is acidic. No? So ibig sabihin, it is more soluble if the pH is less than 10.46. Ito kasi yung parang threshold niya, di ba? Na sinasabi ko sa inyo, yung molar solubility, yun yung threshold ng kanilang, ano, shifting to the left to the right, di ba? So, yan. So, dapat, ang pH natin should be less than 10.46 so that we can say that it, this is, this salt will be more soluble. And kung gusto mo yan ay less soluble, then your pH must be greater than, greater than 10.46. So, yan. So, again, ano yung concept? Kasi, at pH less than this, may enough H plus tayo to diminish the amounts of OH sa product so that the equilibrium will be shifted to the right. However, at pH greater than this, we have more OH. As a result, common ion effect nangyayari. So the equilibrium is shifted to the left. So inalam natin kung ano yung limit ng pH. No? Hanggang saan siya? Mag, anong pH tayo pwede mag-base kung siya ay soluble or hindi. No? So we just found that using our calculations that that threshold is pH 10.46. Okay, and that's all for our midterm coverage. We are done actually. Tapos na tayo. <laughs> okay, so yan. Again, uh, to summarize everything na lang. So again, start na lang tayo from the top. Uh, an insolubility equilibria, this is an equation th that describes the dissociation of our ions from the precipitate. No? The equilibrium expression accompanied by this equation is called the KSP or the solubility product K, no? constant. We have different values for K. I'll just save this slide. No? Para save sa, picture, uh, sa inyong phones as pictures. And we can use that to get the molar solubility and the solubility of our salts. Now, so molar solubility and solubility it does it just tells us about the extent of dissociation of our precipitate. Now, kapag matasi molar solubility, that means it is ano it is ano uh, ionized. Now, pero kapag mababay molar solubility, ibig sabihin mababay yung ionization niya. Okay. The usual calculation process is the same as other equilibrium problems kung magamit tayo ay stable. Pero again, may shortcut nga kung sinabi sa inyo. Just know kung ano yung ano, relative amounts ng cation na nayon mo. You will have different expressions to solve for the molar solubility directly. Okay? Uh, from this idea, by relating Q sa K, you can predict kung kailan tayo magpo-form ng precipitate. If your reaction quotient is greater than K, then that is the time where precipitates will start forming. However, if it is less than that, hindi ka magpo-form ng precipitate. Okay? So, just, such as this example here. In this case naman, we have, kunare, we have two precipitates that can form. Pero, ang reality, hindi agad sila nabubuo at the same time because of their differing KSP. Magkaiba kasi sila ng KSP, kaya mangyayari yung isa muna mabubuo, then followed by the other. 
Ang ginawa natin dito sa problem na to, gusto natin yung isa lang mabuo. So, ginawa natin ay inalam natin what will be the uh, the concentration of the metal needed to precipitate the bromide ions and not the chloride ions. So, inalam natin kung ano yung mga threshold nila. So, kailan mafuform yung AGBR when your concentration of silver is greater than this? Kailan mafuform yung AGCL? If the concentration of silver is greater than this. So that means if you want to precipitate AGBR, you want concentrations greater than this but less than this. Kasi kapag lumagpas ka dito, yung CL mabubuo na din siya. So if you want only BR, ito yung ating limit or ito yung range of the AG concentration. So within those limits, AGBR will be precipitated. Higher than this, yung CL mabubuo din yan and you will have problems with that now. Uh, diniscuss naman natin dito, um, common ion effect. So this is just an application of the Chate principle. So it shows us that in the presence of common ion effect, uh, in the presence of common ions, the solubility of the salt decreases as the equilibrium is shifted to the left. According to the Chate principle, when you add products, the equilibrium will be shifted to the reactants. In our case, pabalik siya sa precipitate. Na. So, parang tinutulak mo yung pre precipitate pabalik. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya magiging soluble. Lesser extent yung solubility niya. Other factors may include pH. So, depending on the type of your salt, if that, is, if that has basic or acidic properties, then pwede ka, ma pwede ka makabuo ng ano, Pwede ka magkaroon ng ano, common ion effect din doon. Okay. So if you have basic solutions, mas magiging soluble yan sa acidic. If you have acidic salts, that will be more soluble in basic, basic solutions. No? Ang main concept lang doon, yung OH pati yung H, they react together. No? So kapag nabawasan yung OH as it reacts with H+, the equilibrium will be shifted to the right. Ako na rin, yung H plus naman, nag-react with OH, the equilibrium will be shifted to the right as well, if that is acidic salt. Okay? So, yun lang. Doon lang umiikot yung buong ano, quiz natin <laughs> for part 2. However, for part 2, I made the quiz longer. So, sabi ko, 60 minutes na yun. Bakit? Kasi mas maraming calculations doon. Okay? So, mas maraming calculation na oh, ganyan. What will be the ano? Ganito, ganyan, blah, blah, blah. So, ganoon ako ng 60 minutes. Pero two attempts pa rin. Okay. However, uh, I should remind you that the examination is good for one attempt only. That's why yung mock exam natin sa Sab Sabado Linggo. One attempt lang yon. 25 items. So, kalahati siya ng items sa exam nyo. Para ma-practice tayo. Okay. And that's good for 45 minutes. Now, again, that's not recorded. Uh, hindi rin required mag-take, pero if you want, you may. No? Para ma-check nyo kung hanggang saan ang kaya sa exam. The questions will be different with our quizzes, no? syempre. Okay? So, hand-picked questions yun for you. No? So, yan. So, that will be all for our session. Again, may I remind everyone that next week, wala tayong klase. Uh, I mean, sa Thursday, walang, walang klase. Next week, uh, exam yan, so hindi tayo magkikita. So, mag-review na lang kayo this week. Tapos, uh, sa fourth week ng March, dito tayo mag, kakaroon ng consultation about your midterm grades. No? Your midterm grades may be available here sa Monday o kaya sa Thursday. No? Then, magkakonsult tayo. Sabihin natin saan, saan nagkamali, anong kailangan gawin upang malaman na mataas dapat ang grades na. So, ganun. Ganun natin pag-usapan yan. Then, most likely, ang regular class na natin would be on the first week of April, no? after the Semana Santa. Okay? So, mukhang medyo mahaba-haba pahinga nyo. So, yan. Let's take those times to uh, to rest. No? Alam ko pagod kayo sa buhay. No? And so that will be all for our session today. Na. So I'll see you again sa regular classes natin sa susunod na mga panahon. Again, uh, remind ko na lang ulit before I end this 
session. Yung quiz natin, don't forget yung quiz, no? That is open starting today until Wednesday for part one and for part two that will be open starting uh, Thursday until Saturday. Yung mock exams, that is good for uh, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. So, doon siya magiging open, Saturday, Sunday. Hindi uh, di nyo kailangan, hindi yun required, pero if kaya nyo i-take, adi go, para ma-review kayo. For your worksheets, nag upload ako ng mga utang kong worksheets, no? mga kulang ko pa. Uh, dito na lang, dito ko na lang siya ilalagay, no? Yung lecture, kompleto ko na eh. Okay, so chapter 3, chapter 4 lang, meron kami doon eh. Pero sa lab, mm, to follow na lang, ha? Okay, medyo na busy ako lately. So, yan. Okay, so ganun lang. I hope these materials will help you sa inyong review na. And also, if you have found any errors, especially mga typo, say I usually do this stuff kapag gabi. Eh. So if you find any errors, just let me know. No. Hindi naman ako tulad ng iba na magagalit kapag sinabi mo, eh, sir, may mali po. Hindi ganun. Sabi nga nila, di ba, we should always be teachable. We are not always correct. So, kaya yan. Kaya, yan. Pakasabi na lang kapag may errors. Ha? Kasi I, I am also a person. Duling-duling din ako pag gabi. So, yan. Pakicheck na. Ah, by the way, eh, ito pala isa sa mga major correction ko dito. I forgot to tell you kanina. At ito pala isa sa mga major correction ko. If you can see the, ano, this answer doon sa... I don't hindi kasi lahat naka-take ng question na yun. Naka-shuffle kasi yung question niya. Eh. And then sa may ano, eh, ano formula determination. Di ba? You, you combusted this metal. Ah, teka lang. Tignan nga natin yung quiz. Kwento ko na to ngayon pa lang. Na para para unti na lang magtatanong ulit. Na ah, hindi yan. Malalaman yung sagot eh. Saan ba yun? Quiz 3 Lab. Okay. So, di ba may item dito sa Quiz 3 Lab na ganito? Hindi lahat na take to, no? The combustion of blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Sabi dyan, uh, write the formula. So, mapansin nyo, dalawa yung correct answer. It's either C4H9 o kaya C3H7. Which one is more correct? Yung more correct ay itong C4H9. Pero bakit dalawa yung kinonsider kong answer? Kasi this is partly my fault then. Kasi di ba nun dinidiscuss ko sa inyo yung, ano, yung formula? I forgot na other than 0.3 and 0.5. Di ba pag 0.3 times 3 para maging whole number? Pag 0.5 times 2 para maging whole number? I forgot na meron din palang 0.25. Okay. Nakalimutan ko siya. No? So, kapag 0.25, you multiply the reduced moles by 4. Okay. Para maging whole number sila. Sa case kasi ng problem na yon, ang reduced moles doon sa isang element ay may 0.25. Okay. So, ang ginawa doon, di ba, na-round up to 0.3. Kaya naging C3H7 yon. However, Kung i-consider mo yung 0.25 as is, no, kailan i-multiply mo yun sa 4 para maging C4H9. That is the ano, that is the correct answer. However, I still accepted C3H7 because yun yung ano ko, yun yung una kong nasabi, no. Kailangan going one decimal place. No? However, again, if may 0.25 done, I, ano niya siya, i-maintain niya yung 0.25 kasi that can be turned into whole number by multiplying it by 4. So, dinouble check ko na uli ito. So, itong tatlo lang yung mga decimal na meron. 0 0.25, 0 0.3, pati 0.5. Now, pag 0 0.25 times 4 yung reduce moles, pag 0 0.3 times 3 yung reduce moles, pag 0 0.5 times 2 yung reduce moles to make them whole numbers. Yun na yan, yan na yan lahat na. So, I will show the solution for chapter uh, quiz 3. No? Until now, di ko pa rin tapos. No? Okay. So, yan. Ipapakita ko yung solution for each problems para may kasagutan bakit ganun yung sagot. No? Paano nakuha ni Sarah yun? 
So, pakita ko na lang doon sa solution and take note that this is the more correct answer than this. No? Okay. So, yun lang. So, hopefully, makatulong yung mga worksheets na yun sa review niya. So, wala na naman akong iba na masasabi. Yeah. So, I think I'm done with my ano, monologue. So, I think that's all for our session today. I'll see you again sa mga susunod na panahon na. So, study well and hopefully, pag lumabas na yung ranking ng ating Deptal scores, no, may makita ako na isa sa mga inyo, isa sa inyo. Kasi I believe in you, no? magagaling naman kayo. Okay? Hopefully, pasok kayo sa top 10 or sa top 20, let's say. No? Okay? So, yan. So, with that, no? thank you for your attendance and good luck reviewing. No? You may start reviewing now and bye-bye. So, a copy of the class recording will be uploaded on YouTube. Uh, again, kailangan pasok sa top 10.